Hey everyone, this is Daniel with DB Studios and welcome to the second part of my 2020 venting slash hardship confession session videos. The reason why I'm doing these videos in a way is because a lot of us went through a lot of hardships in 2020 and I just wanted to make this like a space where we can begin to talk about some of these hardships and I wanted to be upfront with some of the things that I personally went through in 2020. I'm normally a very reserved person but I feel like talking about this these things is a great way for many of us to flush out some of the things that weighed us down and you know really begin to relate to one another in the first part i spoke about what it was like graduating architecture school during covid and here i want to go more in depth and talk about how it affected me financially and more specifically relating to a job that i had during the time and if you haven't seen the first part feel free to watch it after this video if you like so how does one really begin to deal with something like losing your job or being furloughed from your job. That's what I'm going to share and talk about in this video. So in order to really begin to set the mood in terms of how it affected me, I have to just give a little bit of, I guess, a backstory on myself. Me, I'm a studious person in terms of work. I'm not too in my own horn or anything, but I wanna to begin to illustrate the image that people have of me. True story, when I was graduating from high school, um, many, many years ago, there was this little thing for the yearbook, for the yearbook committee. They were in charge of beginning to lay out different se sections of the yearbook. And one section was about um, categories for people. For example, there was a category called um, the most came the most late to school a category called most likely to su succeed a category for the nicest hair nicest eye I all these things some superficial some not so much the way a person or a few people get nominated for certain categories is that the whole school has to vote right you look at all the names and everyone vote and I actually won three categories and one of the categories was most likely to succeed so the reason I'm mentioning this is because in my life Life in my family there's always been this pressure to do well and to be good at everything that you do and I could really get into this and get into the nitty-gritty details but I won't but I just wanted to really communicate with you all that there's always been this image of me or this sort of pressure to always do well in school academically or if I work financially to have a good job that pays great money, things like that. For me, it's not that I don't enjoy working hard. I actually really do. When things go wrong, it makes me a little bit harder on myself, if that makes sense. So now that you have that image in your head, now I can fast forward and tell you exactly what happened. As I mentioned in the previous video, my five-year plan involved me only having one more class of my final year before graduating and also working in a firm. If you all don't know, I basically do architecture and I'm aspiring to be a licensed architect. Everything worked according to plan in the beginning. You know, I took many credits I took summer classes in college and all these things helped me to get all of my 160 credits out the way. I only had one mandatory class my last semester in college. Thanks to a referral from a friend, I also had a job my last year in college. And I'm not going to say where I worked for, you know, confidential reasons, but those who know me personally will know exactly the workplace I'm talking about, the firm I'm talking about. And I got this firm and you know, it was nice. It was like a medium sized firm. Everything was really cool and, um, you know, it was nice going to work every day. I went to the gym. I felt complete. The pay was okay. I felt good and I had my education going and, you know, then COVID came around. A lot of things happened academically. And if you want to know what happened academically, you can uh, check out the video afterwards. So I won't get into that in this video. I'm going to only focus on what happened with work. I know that some of my friends started losing their jobs. Some were legit laid off. I don't know anyone who was furloughed. Um, some, they had to close a business temporarily. They weren't like furloughed, but it was kind of like, I guess it's like an equivalent of a furlough. You could say that. I was still working at this time. This was like um, March, like mid-March, something like that. 
and for me you know it, it was okay I told some people when it happened to them hey don't you know don't be hard on yourself this is beyond your power right uh, it's because of the situation this is unprecedented you know we can't blame anyone you know we can't blame anyone we can't blame a single person for this this that's literally absurd to blame a single person for this i was uh talking to some of my friends and saying hey you know don't blame yourself that you know those things happen it's not you it's not your abilities right but then it happened to me i could tell it was coming because um uh, the office manager was having some discussion as as well as one of the partners and i was getting that vibe and one day um one of the partners called me out of nowhere and i already knew what he was going to say but when he said it he was like okay listen you know because of covid you know we're getting in less projects some projects have to be halted uh if any of you don't know the way um your staff at your firm is paid is through these projects you know the junior architects you know marketing all this stuff the way they're paid is through these projects so because a lot of the projects were slowing down or being shut down due to covid of course basically what happened was that a lot of people they had to like push aside but at that time they said um the person told me we don't want to lay anyone off and we got a, a letter stating that we don't want to lay everyone off we value all of our staff that made me feel important basically everyone was being furloughed right everyone was being furloughed and they said you know as soon as possible everyone's going to return we're going to bring all of you back and he even told me personally hey you're graduating in may don't worry we got you a job here when you graduate so the end that's the end of the video well not quite and some of you may be saying daniel at least you are furloughed and you weren't laid off or you know your company just shut down completely and well i advise you keep listening and you'll see what happened then comes after graduation right graduation i hit them up saying hey you know and so now that i'm a junior architect no longer just an architectural designer because i graduated i said hey um can we discuss salary and things like that and i got a reply saying hmm, we're not really in a position to discuss that and they gave me another letter extending my furlough, right? And then they extended it again. And they said, okay, July. Then they said August. And then they said September. By the way, keep in mind, this is so sad. Um, I didn't apply for unemployment during this time because in the beginning, I know you might say, Daniel, you're an idiot. But listen, during the time when it happened initially in April, because April 1st was uh, the day where I was like furloughed. Um, it actually started, my last day was the 31st, but then since then I wasn't working. So because between April and May, it's like, the end of May that is, it was like about two months. So I said, well, you know, it's all right. I don't need to apply. I could use what's in my savings in the meantime. By the time, you know, they pushed it to June and then um, like late June, early July, and then they pushed it to August. And by that time it kept happening and happening. And I kept thinking, okay, just one more month. I don't need to do it. One more month. I don't need to do it. And then September 1st, they still didn't bring me back. Like, can you believe it? And I hit them up again and this is when they, they told me and I had really mixed feelings about this. They said, um, listen, you can start looking for work elsewhere and you know, in the future, you know, if we, you know, we have the, we're able to take you on, we're gonna do that. To me, in my mind, that was the equivalent of saying, it's a euphemism basically. And that was the equivalent of saying, nah, we don't want you. And we're not gonna bring you back, you know, anytime soon. Oh, if we need you, we'll bring you back. Oh, we don't want you to feel bad or something. Some of you may say, well, Daniel, clearly that's not the case, you know. You have to think of it from a financial standpoint. You know, you're a recent grad. You know, it is more important to have, you know, people with a little bit more experience, you know, after school working there for these projects to run, for the firm to com continue to run. And I completely agree with that, but it, you know, it is the feeling of le being led on. If any of you have been led on before, it's kind of just like tugging you along and saying, hey, well, you know, just give me a clear answer. You know, it would have been better if I was laid off. You know, I I'm sorry to say it in such a crude way, but you know, it really hurt. And you know, the over time I started getting angry at myself and going back to that little image I painted for you all earlier, you know, it's, it's that image people have of me. You know, everyone was saying, Daniel, how's work? You know, how's this, how's that? And then, you know, it's like my pride, I had to like, it was like crumbling. And 
inside I was being like destroyed, you know? People always saw me as this person, you know, he's always working hard, he's always doing what he can to make money, all these things. And for me, it was just tough because that was not the reality. And it wasn't my fault, but at the same time, I felt it was my fault, you know? I felt that, you know, if I was really, if I was so, so good, they would want me to come back no matter what. And, you know, they'll find a way to make it happen. Because I do believe some of these firms, some of these companies can bring you back, but I guess it's risky. And, you know, looking back, taking a few steps back and looking at it, I do understand from a business standpoint how, you know, you do need, you know, people with more experience working, right? For that exact reason is why I began to felt you know, undermine. I began to felt like I wasn't important. I didn't have the value. And the same thing I was telling other people now, you know, I couldn't even say that to myself because I felt led along, you know, and not long after, I think by October or something or November or yeah, I think it was October. The same firm I was working for had a job position opening, which made me go like, are you serious? <sighs> To be fair, the job position opening was for a senior architect to lead some projects, which, you know, leadership is very important in a time like that. And that's what's going to keep the firm from, you know, crumbling. But, you know, there's a lot of blurred lines and there's a lot of things which it really brought me down. I felt like I was a loser. I felt the worst. I, I wasn't making money. I was running out of money. We ran into financial situations and, you know, you know, some of my friends, you know, sometimes they'll say, hey, dude, let's do this. And I'm sorry. I said, sorry, I can't, you know, I, I legit wasn't, I wasn't even being that person who's humble or I have a lot in my savings account. And I'm just like, I don't got money. No, I really didn't. And it's kind of sad. I remember one of my, my boys, he was like, oh, you, why can't you get the P5? I'm like, bro, like, you know, like I, I can't, or, you know, why can't you get dinner with us? And I'm just like, I can't like. And like, I, it was hard for me to really talk to people about this. Probably like one or two people know what I'm saying right now. And it's, it, it was just really hard. And, you know, I might not, unfortunately, I won't have time to get into all of the really hard details, rough things that we went through. Um, I'm actually gonna save some of this for the last part, which is probably one of the hardest things I've went through in the entire year, you know? This and the graduation does not compare to it, honestly. And I'm gonna get more into it a little bit later, but um, that's that's really to paint a picture of how I felt, how despondent I was because this happened. And it's like that image people have of me. I was I was so concerned, what will people think about me? You know, the people who are like, ah, oh, yeah, I see you got money or all that stuff. I understand you shouldn't care about what people think about you, but like, Honestly, at the end of the day, we all do to some extent, whether we say we don't or not. It's that's how it is. But it's not just uh, the image that we have in front of other people. It's also our self-confidence. It's our ability to support our families, our loved ones, all these things, support ourselves, you know. And I think my job was really defining me. And that's something I learned. So how did I deal with it? What did I do about it? It wasn't easy. And this is not really an immediate solution so i'm just gonna let you all know right now some of you may be still suffering from this right now maybe you're just watching because you related at some point but really what i ended up doing was that with the time especially after i graduated because now i didn't have work i used that time that i would have used you know being in the office all the stuff to say hey i am going to work i'm going to do my own work and no guys this is not a you know get rich online you know invest you know people who do that yes you can make money from that but this is not what this video is about basically i have been into photography for about four and a half years it's going to be five years pretty soon i've been doing photography and um getting a little bit better at it, but my love for even photography or even using the camera has gone back as far as middle school. And you know, if any of you seen the introduction video for this channel that I made back in the beginning of August, I believe it was of 2020, I basically talked about how in middle school I used to do AMVs, I edited videos, and that's really when I began to use all these programs like Photoshop, After Effects, Sony Vegas, and really get into editing, and I started to love, like, 
like the idea of film, photography, graphic design. Architecture was still really my calling and what I wanted to do for a profession, but this was something that was more of a hobby. And you know, over the years in college, when I finally got my first camera in 2016 of April, taking all these pictures, but I didn't put any of my pictures online and I wasn't sharing my work with people, including my artwork, things like that, until some, some of my friends saw it, some strangers in the school saw it and said, Daniel, how are you not sharing your work? Going back to last year, 2020, that's when I really began to think and reflect on the fact that I have time now. I always told myself, oh, when I have time, I'm gonna draw, I'm gonna do this video, I'm gonna do that. And really for me, I said, well, guess what? Now is the time. I started my own platform, my own Instagram, which is db underscore studios underscore. So I made the Instagram, began to share some of my work. And then also, um, side thing, I also started this little video series, Voice for the Future, which is going to come out very, very soon, by the way. And I also made a trailer for that. I uploaded it to this YouTube channel as well as my Instagram. And this became the platform where I began to share a lot of my photography work. And eventually I started uploading on this YouTube channel to make tutorials for designers and, you know, graphic designer architecture students all of the like and really my goal was to inspire people to design and do cool things and I want to put emphasis on ins the word inspire because for me I think I was being drained I felt like I had a lack of inspiration but as I began to do this I began to felt happier and I began to felt feel really excited especially as I was editing the trailer you know editing the photos and you know I started doing a, a, a photo series and making trailers for the photo series and that made me excited and my goal was really to inspire others to do the same you know take your hobby make it into something and have fun with it so literally me losing my job is the reason why I have this YouTube channel. And this channel isn't necessarily full time for me. It's definitely more of a fun thing. I don't, it, could I monetize in the future if I do get to a thousand subscribers and 4,000 hours of public watch time within the next six months, which I don't think is possible. However, I know for some people it's like a full-time thing, but for me, I actually enjoy doing these things and I actually enjoy making the tutorials, um, having discussions like this, talking about various things in regards to design programs or you know, film equipment, photography. I actually have a lot of fun doing these things, including small projects and you know, little animations such as the Christmas video I've made. You know, I, I, I really enjoy making things like this and you know all the busy work I was actually pulling all-nighters again I was pulling all-nighters again so much that it messed up my gym schedule that I had well gym as in working out at home so that was really something and I kept myself busy and busy and I made time for other things and before I knew it I began to really get over the fact that of what happened regarding work and I'm not gonna lie it affected us with still financially but um Thank God the Lord provided for us during this time. Somehow we still always had enough to eat and you know, we, we fared, uh, we fared decently, I can say. So I'm, I'm really grateful for that. My point for saying all this to really get this point across. Well, so how does a person begin to get over it? Well, step one is to really acknowledge that it's not your fault. But if you're like me, you will begin to say, nope, it's my fault. You know, maybe if I had more skills or, you know, if I was, you know, if I work faster like this other person or this or that. And, you know, I know I even left out a lot of details about how I felt. That's how strongly I felt about it. I was really despondent. I, I, I was even tempted to ask some of the my coworkers at that firm saying, hey, did you get back to work? But that would have been petty and I, I should be happy for them. You know, I should be happy that they're working again and all these things. And that sort of negativity was not healthy for me. So I didn't do anything like that, of course. Once I kept telling myself it's not my fault, I, I had to, say, you know what, 
if I am productive, I will realize that, hey, I am a capable person. Hey, I do have the ability to work hard. I do have the ability to do great things. And then working and doing these videos, the photos, going around doing photo shoots, improving my photography skills, that has been so rewarding because it is proven to me that, hey, Daniel, you're capable. You can do it. I even made my own website. You know, things that would have never happened, all these things would have never happened. I would not even be talking to you right now if those things didn't happen. So it's all for a reason. So by being productive, whether it's with hobbies or anything, and trust me, trust me, I understand sometimes it's depressing. You don't want to get up. You don't, you don't want to do anything. You're exhausted. And that was me as well. But really, it's because I said, hey, I'm going to prove it to myself and I proved it to myself. I proved it to myself and it's, you know, I'm not working on anyone's schedule. You know, it's my schedule and I gave myself a lot of work. Trust me, I was not sleeping. Doing that and working and, you know, improving my skills and, you know, slowly but steadily growing the platform, it was just amazing. And it proved to me that Daniel, you are capable. Daniel, you are worth it. You know, it would, that firm is going to wish they didn't like, bring you back sooner. But I mean, I'm sorry. Once again, I understand from a financial standpoint, I can't, it's not healthy to make myself think that way. As for you, you shouldn't think that way. So be productive with something you like. And if it's something you like, you know, hey, you, you know, it's something that's not going to seem as tedious. Those are the really the first two steps. And as you begin to do that, you begin to cope with it. And then eventually there comes a time where you start applying for work because, you know, to meet your financial needs. I know many of you have bills to pay. And so saying, Daniel, how can I, how do you expect me to do something like this? I need to look for work. And listen, I understand looking for work is important and you should still look for work as you're doing those things. If possible, you can even, if it's something that you can profit off of, try to make a little bit of money to help sustain you here and there. And that's something that can also add on top of it. So yes, I don't want it to be so much as your main source of income. You're looking for work, but it's like a little side thing to sustain you. Um, I actually did a lot of free photo shoot just because I was new as a photographer, me new as in like people didn't know who I was as a photographer. So I didn't feel right to charge people. But then, you know, I started saying, Hey, you know, I'm going to start making a little fee and that's something you can do. Um, maybe not everything is profitable, but I can guarantee you at the very least, if you start having that sort of mindset, it's going to ease the stress on you so much. And when you ease the stress, you're going to be healthier. You're going to be able to think clearer and that lack of stress, you know, as the stress goes down, you know, eventually you will find a job. And when you get back to work, you're going to ha have a strong and healthy attitude as well. And you have to keep in mind, you know, you know, a lot of things are not permanent and I know it's scary, but you know, having that stress on top of it, it's only going to beat you up. So this is really my advice. And that's really what helped me to deal with it. And it sucked. Trust me. I, I severely understated how bad I felt. I was like, I felt like garbage. I was like, I'm worthless. You know, I'm, Hey, I'm a man. And like, I can't do that. It's like this whole macho attitude, but I mean, it's not just a macho attitude, whether you're guy, female, you know, everyone needs their career and their career. I guess everyone's career defines them to some degree, but it was, it was tough, but, um, that's how I began to cope with it. And, you know, ultimately there comes a time where you just say, Hey, that's the situation it is what it is and no one can really change it. Um, all only thing that can change, which you have the power to change is what, how you use your time and your attitude towards the whole situation that is in your control. So I hope you enjoy this video, whether this is something you went through and things are better right now, let me know in the comment section. If you're dealing with it or you can relate in some way, also please comment and share your story. I would love to hear, you know, if you want advice, I could give advice or, you know, you just wanted to share with people. This could just be a collective space where everyone begins to talk about some of these things. So thank you once again for watching. Once again, feel free to see the previous part where I talk about how it was like graduating during COVID if you haven't. And of course, stay tuned for the next two parts that's going to follow. So that's it. And I hope to see you all in the next video.